Are you ready to rumble? You filming? What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel where we are going to discuss double wishbone suspension geometry and how it relates to drifting. You guys already saw our McPherson strut videos. A lot of the information can be transferred from the McPherson strut to the double wishbone, but there is also a lot of differences. So Mr. Cameraman, zooming in on some of the details, we still have all of our adjustability with our steering rack. The steering rack can go up, down, forward, backward. Um, we still have our rack limiters so we can measure the travel range. We can go through our full sweep. We can check what our toe is. We've got our Ackerman here. The main difference from what you saw in our last jig and this one is that there is now a upper control arm and a virtual, not a virtual, a fake or representation of a, of a shock. So we can simulate the motion that the shock would have and then we can lock it in at different places so that we can show you what's going to be going on under compression and while you're driving at different ride heights. So that's pretty cool. You can also simulate some important differences when you're talking about wishbone suspension. The relation that the lower has with the upper, the height difference that it is, the length between the ball joints on the knuckle versus the length between the ball joints on the knuckle, the pitch that the upper control arm has to have anti-dive geometry, the offset that the upper control arms have to make the upper shorter, both from the chassis and from the knuckle. Shorter from the knuckle gives it its um, kingpin axis or its steering axis inclination. And then the difference from the chassis to where the upper control arm mounts gives it the camber gain effect that is required for cornering and handling. And yeah, there's, there's tons of things that you can get into on how a double wishbone suspension is designed and built by OEM manufacturers of automobiles. So there's a lot to go over and there's especially a lot to go over in terms of how it relates to drifting. Like for a really quick example, we're going to obviously dive into it per episode, but let's say that I had a knuckle adapter that I installed on this and I wanted roll center correction added to my knuckle. So I make my lower control arm mount lower on the knuckle. So that's great. You're doing exactly what you need to do to, to have a better roll center for your chassis. But what you're doing and you don't realize what you're doing is you're increasing the distance between the lower control arm and the upper control arm pivot point. And this is gonna cause an increase in camber gain versus the original um, manufacturer's design. And it's gonna throw a bunch of things out. So what you would need to do is if you added roll center correction to the lower part of the knuckle, you would need to shorten the upper part, which on your car, that would require a lot of cutting, modifying, but on our jig here, we can just change our height reference here using this tube and a clamp. And you can already see, as I increase the distance between my lower and my upper, you can see the camber changing dramatically on the wheel itself. So just that small difference in height is exactly what we're gonna be talking about on how your suspension is doing while you're drifting, especially when you lower your car. When you lower your car, all of your control arm angles are likely pointing up or close to it. And this is gonna give you some undesirable characteristics. So with all that said, we will go over each individual aspect of the geometry really quickly. I'll show you how it's adjusted on this jig. And then you can check us out on our next videos where we go in depth on each individual component. First up, camber. Using this jig, so we can change the camber using our upper. We can change the camber here on the knuckle. And we can change the camber here on the lower. We can adjust caster using this jig, like so. Like this. Or we can adjust caster at the lower, like this.
Toe and Ackerman can be adjusted here. Motion ratio can be adjusted with our multiple holes in the lower control arm. Our KPI can be adjusted on our knuckle as well as using the upper and lower control arms, very similar to how camber is adjusted. So we have a slight difference here.